Usually, when I start these videos, man, I like to say, yo, what's up, y'all? Chris Production. I'm back with another amazing video and, you know, all that good stuff, man. But today, on this video, bro, it's not an amazing video. Man. It's not an amazing video at all. You know what I'm saying? Recently, about a day ago, maybe some change, school shooting for confirmed dead, man. I'm talking about the one that happened in Georgia, Alapeche High School, I think that's what it's called, or Appalachia High School, one of the two. You know what I'm saying? We got some live now from Fox footage. We got some uh, CBS News footage. We got a lot that we're about to get into, man. We're going to cover this whole situation, what happened, why it happened, and who did it. And yeah, man, let's just jump right into it, bro. We're standing on the campus of Appalachia High School here at Bear County Schools. First and foremost, I want to lift up our community. I want to give our th sympathies to our community, our school system, our kids, our parents. It had to witness this today. Uh, obviously, what you see behind us uh, is an evil thing today. At about 9.30 this morning, we received the first call that there was an active shooter in this, on, on this campus. We're not releasing any information as far as injuries, but we have multiple injuries. Uh, this is a very, very fluid investigation. It's very early. And I have asked the assistance of the GBI and the agencies here behind me today, and there are multiple agencies that responded this morning to help us and help the sheriff's office. We do have a suspect in custody, and we are asking for your patience as the media to please let us get the facts that we need to make sure yeah, we get- Yeah, the media are gonna be all over this. They're gonna be a whole bunch of people asking questions, Whole bunch of outraged parents. They say 30 people got injured I, I, and four people died, but 30 people got injured. So it's going to be a whole lot going on, man. It's going to be a whole lot going on, but they're going to have to be patient. They're going to have to wait. They're going to have to, you know what I'm saying, just just have God and faith, you know what I'm saying? So that's all they can do right now. You know what I'm saying? Just wait for the police to do their job. That's right. Again, I've asked the GBI to help us, the sheriff's office to help us along with this. I know this is not what you want to hear, but I'm not going to answer questions after this is over with. But I wanted to give you the respect and our community respect to let them know what was going on initially. We're in the process of reunifying our students with their parents. Obviously that's chaotic, but we want to be respectful of them and their privacy as well. I want to thank the state, the federal agencies, the local agencies that showed up today, as you can see, the multiple EMS and fire from other agencies that responded today. Again, I ask that you lift up Barrow County Schools, lift up Appalachia, lift up our agencies. This is gonna take multiple days for us to get answers as to what happened and why this happened. But I wanted to give you a statement. It is our hope in conjunction with these people behind us that we can give you another statement around four o'clock because I know you have to go back on the air. That is my hope. But I wanted to be fluid with you all, understanding that it's fluid as well with this investigation. I appreciate you being patient with us. Again, it's very active and is ever developing. Every minute it's developing on what we're finding. So we're gonna have releases from other schools. Again, we ask that you be patient with us. Please be patient with us. And hopefully I can give you more information or more better information as you will, if you will, this afternoon. Thank you all for coming out here. We'll be back shortly, okay? Sheriff, it's been widely reported that people are dead. Is that true? I'm not releasing any information. We have multiple injuries. Yeah, you say you want to ask some questions. I'm not releasing any information. Guys, I'm not going to answer any more questions this time, okay? Thank you. All right, so we received just a very, very brief update. Uh, let's, let's listen here. I'm trying to get the students back um, with their families. We will be holding a news conference at four o'clock. If you're not already following us on Twitter, X, make sure you're following us. We'll be, we'll be providing updates then. I know there are a lot of details, investigative details. You want more information. That is what the investigators are actively working on right now. You can add. Yeah, so the idea will be to be back here at four o'clock, but keep an eye on our social media. If that changes, you'll know it. We'll All be right. able to. 
so they ain't talking about nothing. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hearing some of the emotional uh, and, and alarming and tragic accounts of what happened there this morning. Yeah, Tom, so you've also been seeing buses like this. They've been going in and out. Hi there. You've been seeing Bar Barrow County buses going in and out probably the last 30 minutes. I've seen them coming here to the high school, but there's really a big line up there. I believe that's at the middle school uh, that is in the back part, and that line has grown since uh, we've talked last. There were just maybe three buses at the Look last at point, but now there are more yeah, buses. Yeah, everybody got to go your home. Everybody got to go home, bro. Especially, like, you can imagine all the black parents sitting in there like, uh-uh, y'all not about to take my baby. Y'all not about to take my baby. Uh-uh, no, nah, come on. Homeschool. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're not doing this. We're not playing with these. <laughs> not playing with these folks. About this community. Oh, Everyone knowing each other. People on my Facebook page, seeing that we're covering this, said that they grew up here. They don't live here anymore, but they know the principal. They know they have family members who go here. They know different people who are impacted directly by this. It's one of those places where you know everybody, from what I've been told. It's a tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. You might see people in the grocery store, and even if you move away, you still know everybody that is still here you can still see a fill but it doesn't seem as many parents and family members are coming out as we once saw at one point we've seen more cars coming in and more first responders and then of course we're getting ready to hopefully hear from the sheriff's office here and other top officials that is set up right on the other side here as well again we have seen a lot of different parents coming here from elementary to middle to daycare and then of course you have the parents here at the high school as right. well that is coming out and coming out as well. So we're hearing different things, but we're also talking to students. One lady earlier, we gave her, talked to her live on the air. You heard her. Her name was Camille. She said the gunman was in her classroom. It was her classmate tried to get inside of that classroom, but they would not let him in. She heard about four shots outside of that. Then he said further down, she heard it maybe next door, maybe heard about another couple of gunshots happening there. And then said going to different hallways. We've talked to different students. They said they had to walk out with their hands raised like this with law enforcement. And they said they ran from that back part to that safe space, which was the football field. And many people thought it was a drill. They practiced for this. So they didn't know if it was a drill or if this was something that was for real in this incident. And unfortunately, this was there. But they do train for certain things like that. But one person said they just never know. And this is an ambulance that is going there with it's Siren Northeast Georgia Medical Center. They are not sure if there is anyone in the back, but he is uh, rushing off down the street there. And then we've also seen parents. Are you guys just now coming from the football field? Are you guys coming from the football field? How long have you guys been out there? Want to give an interview like How long next were you guys one? out there? How you going? Um, do you mind if we just ask just a quick question? So you guys were out there for four hours? Are we on the news? <laughs> we are on the news. This is live. How long have you guys been out there? I know uh, you guys have had a long day. We got out, I got out to school at like 11-ish. Because mm -hmm. it happened during second period. So it was like 10, 30, 10, 20-ish. We've then, seen tents back there. What are the different? Yeah, are there great counselors? Up. Yes, there's you see how she got the whole family? Whole family. We getting off of work for this. Oh, God. We pulling up, bro. Coming in deep and they're interrogating students that might have heard or seen something. How are you processing all of this, family? This is a lot to go through. How are you processing this? I'm trying to process it. It hasn't clicked yet. Um, but I don't wish this on any parent in any country, anywhere. Right. Right. I felt my life flash before my eyes. No, that's right. Literally. Did you hear the gunshots at all? Uh, yeah, I was in the hallway, so... Um, you could hear them like bang on the lockers and stuff and then my teacher she unfortunately she like left the classroom but came back but she had like fallen something happened and she screamed at us and we were in a science classroom so there's lab tables so we all like book it for the lab tables she closed the door turns off the lights and um, you could hear them rattle the door and then a couple them as in the gun gunmen or I police so well it had just Police, I didn't hear police shouting until like five minutes later, ten minutes later. Because we heard the sirens first, and then like a couple moments later, you heard like police, police, sheriff. And then um, uh, you could hear like before the police arrived, it was like, it didn't sound like a gun, but it sounded like, I was saying like a trash, like a metal trash can, like going, 
and um, you could hear the kids screaming down my hallway and then you heard more like of like hitting the lockers and stuff and then eventually the police came and walking out you could see like what had happened and then they took us off the football field um, what grade are you in Alrighty. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I know it has been she a very, very long time. I don't know. She's smiling and laughing and all that or chuckling and all that for the camera. And she's trying to, you know, play uh, strong and all that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, from what she's describing, bro, the average girl will be sitting there like shucking up. Like she may, maybe we just can't see it. Like maybe she is like, you know, really rattled up. But this is just how she copes up, copes with it. But, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been sitting there like, yo, like... <laughs> I was sitting there like, yo, like I've been shaking. I voice would have been trembling. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know how it is when you done went through something scary, like like when you went through like a terrible freaking roller coaster or something like that. And you get off and it's like, yo, like you feel me like you just rattled up. You feel me? Like, I don't know, that's how I would be. Long day for you guys. You guys have been listening to people who've been out on the football field for about four hours, Tom, Christine. They're still trying to process it. I think it's still haven't really sunken in um what it is, but there are a lot of great so yeah, so that's one. That's that's a story from this little girl right here. Stewart, who uh, encountered uh, a lot of those students and parents. Kevin, we talked about the relationships that these students have with the faculty. Um, it's certainly different, I believe, in today's day and age than when Christine and I went to high school. Um, you know, the the closeness they have sometimes, especially if they're involved in high school sports, yeah. they're involved with with their families and their academic success. It just feels like a closer school environment today kind of it depends on what school yeah, you go you know, to uh, when you go to the uh, the kind of the uh, exurban or rural areas uh, there is a clear uh, uh, difference in terms of that sense of of community because everybody knows each other and there's a sense right. of uh, collegialness. I mean, we had someone just a few moments ago offer us some water. Uh, it's so appreciated. Uh, folks are, are, are coming together and, and really coming together to love on one another during this really uh, difficult time. And it you sucks can... that it takes a school shooting for people to come together. You know what I'm saying? And maybe I'm just speaking from my own experiences. Like, you know, my people we don't really just come just get together unless we're getting together for like a concert like we're getting together for something negative like a music video or something like that but other than that like we don't really come together and like as a community we just we got each other back you feel me but the, you know what i'm saying it's gonna take something like this something where like all of our kids lives were at stake you know what i'm saying for you know what i'm saying us to be like okay yeah you know what i'm saying let's help each other out and come together and console one another and you feel me Wake up in the morning and and not know what you're going to get into. You can drill for instances like this, and we've talked to kids who said they have actually gone through school drills, but still be completely shocked, caught off guard right. when something like this happens. We talked to a uh, mom and her uh, oldest daughter who came to pick up their son, uh, yeah, this, her little I, brother. I don't mean to keep cutting uh, this dude off, but this is why they're saying that teachers about to start having guns. Because now, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if any other teachers have died in previous school shootings. This is the first school shooting, shoot, school shooting that I've seen where students and teachers died. They was already talking about having, you know, teachers carrying guns and stuff like that, they're about, to, they're about to put that in place for real, bro. They finna put that because now it's really getting to a point where your life is at stake to be a high school teacher or even a middle school, elementary school. It's literally like it's a gamble to be a teacher nowadays. You don't know what school going to get hit with a school shooting or somebody brought a gun to school. Kids bring guns to school all the time, bro. I can remember... I was sitting in my English or what was it, social studies class? It was like uh some type of class. And I was sitting there. I'm sitting right here. I look out the window for I'm just looking out the window just dazing off. I see a police car pull up. I'm like, okay, maybe that's a, a cop that work here, you know, because there's cops that roam the schools. So, but I see a cop pull up right next to the door and then just stop. I'm looking. I see dude jump out. I'm like, okay, who is that? Cuz run all the way to the back of his car, pop the trunk. Up a up a AK, not an AK. What was it? Uh, um, AR. You know the police issued you know assault rifle. I'm like, hold up. So I call everybody else. I'm like, hey yo, look at. This. I'm like, hey yo, look. Do run in the school. I'm like, what in the world? Five minutes later, school's on lockdown. I'm like, what the? 
all shoot. <laughs> and then we all get into the corner. Turns out it was uh, somebody called for, somebody basically said that there was an active scooter, uh, shooter in my school, but there wasn't. It was somewhere else. Long story short, I'll never forget that. That was crazy. <laughs> but these kids, they actually going through it. So imagine, just imagine, bro. Uh, today, uh, he was in the uh, on the football field uh, when he was evacuated, had a chance to talk to the GBI to give his uh, take on what he saw. And I want you to take a listen to what he said. Well, the cops came in after um, they had the, this must one be of the in a custody. Hispanic neighborhood. This, this is nothing but Hispanic kids that go to this school. Um, so they had us walking out with their hands up and um, they it must be the Hispanics that's talking to the, the cops. Black people don't want to talk to them. The these right here. And um, they told us to come back. And when I when I looked to my left side on the floor, I saw one of the shooters. And then, um, oh. like, I would say 10 inches before that, there was a, a kid that was deceased. And then I had to exit to go to the field where everybody's at right now. So. You doing okay? Yeah. No, he ain't doing okay. That boy ain't doing right, okay. So he Talk is doing, okay. doing okay. He need, he need counseling. He he talking about some that he he just saying that that's that's a kid that's what we say oh yeah you doing okay yeah this is you know what I'm saying that's just what you say that man is not doing okay he better go home and have that image of seeing a dead child that he used to go to school with he probably said hey to them he probably talked to him seeing him at lunch eating laughing you just seeing this kid laughing enjoying his life at lunch breakfast whatever you, he's seen this kid before and now he's dead in front of him. He's going to have to be dealing with that for the rest of his life. They better put him in camp. They better, his parents better force him into counseling. Talk, have him talk to somebody. Don't let him Don't let him get a hold of no drugs. He's already in high school. Ain't hard to get no drugs. Don't let him get a hold of no drugs as a, as a coping mechanism. Don't let him get a hold of alcohol. Send him to counseling. Get him some help before that turn ugly. Because that right there, that's it. That's that's. That's generational trauma waiting to happen, bro. I want to clarify something that he said. He talked about one of the shooters. Uh, as far as we know, there is only one shooter, and that person was taken into custody uh, right. after this shooting, which took place here at Appalachia High School around 1030 this morning. Guys? Kevin, I'll ask you the same thing I asked uh, Brittany Edney. Um, even the students you spoke to were just so composed and calm as they recounted what happened. Um, and, you know, some they families and students a lot around talk. That. So I'm curious to see if that you saw other emotions out there from students that right. may have been the opposite of that as yeah, people ain't process no crying, things so no differently. Yelling, no screaming, no none of that. Just, oh you yeah, know, well um, this happened. I'm gonna give you um, a kind of a a, a personal. Uh, approach to this. Uh, sometimes when reporters show up on scenes and we're talking to people in awkward situations and some people can be very, you know, like we're vultures and trying to talk to folks and we're trying to be sensitive because this is obviously a sensitive uh, situation. And I, I, I can honestly say we only had one interaction with someone who was uh, uh, particularly tense. Uh, folks were willing to tell their story if you approach them and, and they would tell you what they knew, uh, what they didn't know. And I would say surprisingly uh, that people were very uh, calm about right. sharing their story i would say clearly they were relieved more than anything because uh, and keep in mind uh, i've been reporting this my colleagues have been reporting this people have been trying to reach people on this campus trying to find out once word got out and because of cell service issues uh, they couldn't get a hold of folks so once you get somebody that you're trying to reach that you love and make sure that they're safe uh, you're you're feeling pretty um pretty good pretty happy right, right this right. And, and i would say that's how people were feeling uh quite relieved right that's what's up kevin i, I don't think i'm thinking, they was, you, I'm thinking a, they was just shrugging it off like oh yeah well you know <laughs> some kids died or whatever but we're chilling though no nah, they just happy because they they, they they with their family or whatever that's what's up though larger stream of vehicles does that mean that they've reopened that road now that was closed off for so long that parents had to walk down to retrieve their kids we see school buses and vehicles behind you could you repeat that again tom i'm sorry sorry we're seeing more vehicles behind you now where that road was closed and parents had to walk the mile and a half seems like they've kind of reopened it to to, to vehicles and buses 
Yeah, Dave, could you pan off um, this crowd here? Um, we were just talking about that. Um, I, unfortunately, because we're getting ready for the live shot, haven't had a chance to talk to any of these cars over here, but that's exactly what I'm uh, thinking. As we've been reporting all day, uh, cars uh, have been parked off to the side of the road and the road was blocked off to people who only needed to be down here. And right. clearly, uh, we have seen a steady stream of cars all of a sudden come down through this area. We've seen school buses going in both directions, sometimes with students in them, uh, just a few, and sometimes empty. Uh, but yeah, if we pan back going down to Tom Miller Road is back in that direction. If you're familiar with the area, uh, you'll see the. So I was I'm, I'm looking for a video that can like give some details on like, you know, like why it happened. But I mean, I guess they don't know. They said they got the shooter in custody, man. Rest in peace to everybody that died from that thing, man, from that situation. You know what I'm saying? And my condolences to the families that got to deal with this, bro. You know what I'm saying? You should never have to wonder or worry or fear that if I send my child to school, will they come back alive? Or, or am I going to get that call? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there was an active shooter and your son just so happened to be one of the casualties. Like, what? I just talked to him this morning. Like, I just sent him to school. Like, what? You know what I mean? Like, and it's just crazy, man. It's just it's just so crazy, bro. I really, I ain't got nothing to say, man. It's just, like I say, man, my condolences. I can't believe this happened. Can't believe this happened, man. Turn us on, guys. Peace. I ain't scared of no bite. See the hunger in my eyes. We gon' get it tonight. They be running me to fall, but I'm built for the fight. Stacking every dollar tall till I'm gone out of sight. I got a man cut, throat, heart froze. I don't need no love. Moving like a ghost, I'm just trying to rise.